Okay? Uh, this is Barbara Ladinsky, who is with the Chumpsford Art Society, and tonight we have the privilege of having Bethany Peck do a presentation for us. Bethany is a well-known artist. She has a studio over at Western Avenue and, and a very broad website. Uh, Bethany is known for her landscapes, her dreamlike landscapes that go after having skies, have atmosphere with them. Uh, so we were very privileged to have her do this, especially since this is her first type of demo for doing it for any organization. So I feel privileged that she is doing it for us. So well, why don't we start with Bethany? Hello, well, um, thank you for having me. Um, I want to say thank you to to the Chelmsford Art um, Society and to you, Barbara, for inviting me um, to do this demo. This is um, a new experience for me, so um, I'm very excited to be here. Um, like Barbara said, I'm a painter, um, and my studio is located in Lowell, Western, 122 Western Avenue, um, Lowell. Um, the studio is open first Saturday of every month. Um, noon to five, we have a big open studio um, and lots of people in the building and lots of fun. So um, Barbara had asked me to come today and speak about my intuitive process of painting. And um, it's intuitive painting is kind of like a buzzword right now. Lots of artists are talking about painting intuitively and painting your emotions and how you're feeling. Um, with my creative process, um, what you see on the canvas is usually what I'm feeling. Um, so I tend to paint very seasonal. Um, so like, let's say in the winter months, such as now, I tend to part, um, paint a little darker. And as spring um, comes along and the days are longer, I start um, painting lighter. You see more um, blue skies and cheerful subject matter. Sometimes I'll even throw in a floral now and then. Um, and then summer, warmer colors, and fall, get into some deep reds and oranges and, and that type of thing. Um, so it's basically intuitive painting. It's just painting how you're feeling and letting the painting guide you. Um, I tend not to have any preconceptions of how I'm going to paint. Um, I just start painting. And sometimes I don't even know what color that I'm feeling. But you know, I pick, a, I pick up some colors, and I just start, start at it. Um, so, um, I brought some of my, some of my work, examples of my work, um, to show viewers. Um, I paint on all different kinds of surfaces. I paint on canvas, wood, copper, um, whatever I'm feeling like, um, I'll tend to paint. Um, and, and my paintings can change and evolve in the process of painting. Um, for example, I, I have a painting over here. Um, I started this one um, last summer, uh, and it was originally a very light, cheerful painting. And as um, the summer progressed and the wildfires, I think everybody remembers all the wildfires out west um, were happening. The smog was um, just, the winds were just bringing the smog over. It was. Um, um, made beautiful sunsets and did beautiful sunrises and, and gorgeous sky, but um, for breathing, if you have asthma, not so good. <laughs> so um, this painting kind of evolved um, through the process of working out my feelings during that um, period with the smog and, and um, the, the poor air quality. And so um, you, that's why you see kind of like this yellow film <laughs> on the painting. It's just like, that's how I was feeling. Um, and then, you know, some of my paintings are lighter and brighter and happier. Um, you know, so I, I, I tend to paint how I'm feeling. Now, can, um, can you tell us, uh, are you using acrylic as a base on that and then oil on top? Or? Um, so this painting start, was purely oil. Um, so, um, and my process kind of changes depending on how, like, I'm, when I say I'm intuitive, I'm very intuitive. My, my process is always changing. I'm always trying to grow and learn from each painting. And this one was all oil. So um, sometimes I start with an acrylic base. Um, and um, other times it's just right, I go right into it with oils. And so this particular painting was all oil. Um, so I'm always like 
like I, I'm like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> I love like new materials and new and like trying out, you know, new ways of doing things. I, I really believe that art should be always evolving. It shouldn't be static. I'm not. I I, I get bored easy. So um, so I'm always changing how I paint. Um, so that's why you know I uh, um, in college I was um, a minor. I had a minor in printmaking and we used a lot of. Um, the zinc and metal plates for, for, for etching. And so it, um, one day I was in the studio and I, I didn't have any canvas. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna, I had this metal laying around. Let's, uh, let's paint on some metal. And, um, and, and I just naturally just started etching and painting on those surfaces with oils. And so like when I say I, I'm truly intuitive, I'm always like, um, changing my process. <laughs> Okay, Don, Dan, I need it louder. Oh, louder. I'm louder. sorry. I no. will try to speak louder. <laughs> no, I think it's the control in the background. Oh, okay. I just got another text that we need to be louder. Okay, I, I will try. Okay. <laughs> this is, um, bear with me, this is so alien for me. Um, I'm not <laughs> a person that tends to um, do these type of things. I'm very private with my process. Um, I, I'm a studio artist. I go to the studio. I shut the door and I paint. Um, that's my time. Um, it's cathartic. It helps me process the world. And um, so when I do something like this, it is totally alien for me. <laughs> um, so lately, a um, uh, uh, material that I've been really excited about working with is something called liquid graphite. Um, and I brought some examples with me. It's Basically, it's it's kind of like a watercolor, but it's graphite, and it and it and it lays down like a, like like watercolor. But you can erase with a kneaded eraser. You can um, um, draw into it. Um, it's um, I've just been really into these like tonal drawings lately. Um, I have some more just sketching, just sketching and sketching. And so I thought for my demo today, um, I'm, I'm going to do an oil painting, but because I've been so tonal with my drawings, I thought I would do something kind of a dark, more tonal type of painting for, for everybody today. Um, let's see here, let's go here. So I started one at, in, um, and I'll jump into that in a minute, um, but I want to show you how I how I start a, a painting like this. Um, I like to use for my acrylic paints just the cheapest craft paint you can get. This one is an espresso by Craft Smart. Um, I got this at Michaels. You can get them at Walmart. <laughs> Super cheap paint, um, but it for what I need to do for an underpainting. It, it, it works just as well as like a golden or any of those fancy smancy um, paints you could buy. Um, and then I also use just really cheap brushes too. Um, I, you don't need fancy materials. Um, don't go out buying fancy things to, to make art. I, I truly believe that um, art is for everyone um, and you don't need expensive materials to, to just make a mark. Um, anybody can make a mark. So I'm going to make an. I'm going to show you how I do my underpainting, and then I'll jump into my into my oil painting. Um, I just have a, a little canvas, just for example. Um, so I'm just going to pour a little paint on here because I'm standing up and trying to do this at the same time. <laughs> I just pour a little paint, and I'm just going to kind of smudge it around and just kind of cover the surface. Just kind of covering it. And I'll take a little paper towel and I have some water here.
and just kind of rub it around. And I just keep rubbing it and trying just try, going back and forth, just trying to cover. I'll pour a little on my palette, the surface of the painting. Trying to cover the canvas. I, I don't like always working on a pure white canvas. It's just, I just like to get something on there and then kind of let the, the paint speak for itself. So are most of your paintings, what color on your painting, like the blue one behind you, what would you have behind that? Um, so that painting started off really warm. Um, I had an, like an orange, a real cadmium orange underpainting that I actually did in oil. Um, and it was very warm. I also had like purples in there too. I let that dry and then I went back into it with the grays and, um, and then I took a gamosol. I like that for my, my solvent. Mm -hmm. um, and I went in and I kind of swished away paint and played around with it. Um, so it's kind of like a, my process kind of like create, destroy, create, destroy. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I, I've done paintings and um, my daughter's often in the studio with me and I'll st suddenly just wipe it all out like almost all of it but little parts and she'll look at me shocked like what are you doing <laughs> and, and I'm like no trust the process <laughs> um, so So you just cover it and then I, I like I'll find like a, I'll decide whether I want it to be vertical horizontal I'm going horizontal today and I'll maybe draw my my horizon and I'm just blocking in kind of the shapes where I might want a cloud I tend to be really minimal with my landscapes. Like, I don't like a lot of stuff in my landscapes. Um, sometimes I'll make a building or some trees, or, but I tend to be very, um, I just like the sky and the land. A right, a nice, give me a nice horizon. Um, and I use a lot of brushes. <laughs> So I just keep working it and working it and playing with it and wiping things out. Um, I like the rule of thirds. Um, if you're not familiar with that, is that um, when you when you create a composition, the, the uh, photographers know this. Um, the best compositions are when you split your um, your picture plane into thirds. Um, it just it, it it makes for a better composition. Needless to say, also, um, rules are made to be broken. <laughs> um, so s sometimes I don't do that. But I, I just think like either big sky or, or um, land in the foreground is just in that rule of third composition just looks really pretty. So it doesn't look like much right now. But basically, that's how I would lay down um, an underpainting. Um, I would also like maybe pour water on here and just kind of play with the haphazard marks of, um, of, the, of, of the acrylic. Um, so I'm going to jump into my oil painting and start with that. Okay, while you're starting that, I have some comments about uh, the love all of the variety of art and sizes that Bethany is showing on the stage. Uh huh. And then I have loved getting to see Bethany's process. I love all of her work. It's amazing oh. that she is so comfortable <laughs> using so many different mediums. Yes. <laughs> and you were so nervous about this. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm just like, I know, like I said, I'm really private with my, with my process. So um, um, an artist, and I won't, I won't 
give them away. But he came to the studio one day. And he's like, Bethany, you have to do this. <laughs> You'll be glad you did this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, OK. So you regret the things that um, you don't do more than the things you do. Okay. So, so we're doing this. Um, <laughs> so I have my acrylic painting down. And, um, and I apologize with, um, to the viewers of how I jump around so much. I am, that's how I am with my process. <laughs> I jump around in my thought. If I could say it with words, I think Edward Hopper said this, if I could say it with words, there'd be no reason to paint. <laughs> and I, I'm more of a visual than a speaker. So with that said, I'm going to paint. Um, so I love gambling products, not that I'm pushing gambling, because I honestly think get whatever you can get. Um, I'm using the 1980, which is like the cheaper uh, gambling products. And I think I'm going to use, and like I said, I, ha I, <laughs> I came here today, I'm like, I don't know what colors I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to use titanium white, uh, deoxyane blue, purple, cadmium orange, sap green, and burnt umber um, for the colors that I'm going to use today. I might add a little ultramarine blue, too. Um, these will, this will make a like really nice, um, like the, the purple and the purp and the green, the sap green when together makes such a beautiful, rich, dark color. Um, and I feel like it's a little, it's dark, but it's still a happy dark, <laughs> <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so I'm laying down some white. Here's my cadmium orange. And I use a paper palette. Um, for you know when I'm out and about, but I also have a huge glass palette in the studio with huge piles of years and years of paint on. Um, like if you come to my studio, you're, you'll look at my palette and you're going to say, "Oh my gosh, you are nuts! Um, how do you paint on that thing?" I do. <laughs> um, it tells us it tells a story, <laughs> um, but you can t tend to see what painting I'm working on with what colors are more prominent. Oh, so green. We have another comment that I am so glad that you were doing this, Bethany. Love you and your work. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Um, it's, good, it's a good experience. Took me a while to get you here. But <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I, like, <laughs> I don't want anyone to get bored with me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm like, I'm I'm one of those people who like I'm either really quiet, or I overshare. <laughs> so we'll see what I do tonight. <laughs> uh, all right, I put a little paint down. I'm gonna need more. Um, so do you have a favorite on size of brushes? Because I've been in your studio and you seem to have every I've, kind of brush I've got there. Every single brush. So you want to know like. If you're looking for secrets for a good painting, <laughs> um, secret for a good painting is having a million brushes. A million, like, use all your brushes. Um, I don't know how many times I've seen, like, students and, like, other, they paint with the same brush the whole entire time. And it flabbergasts me because there is no way you're going to have clean colors if you're, if, unless you're switching your brushes up. <laughs> So I tend, it's, it's a pain with the cleanup, but I tend to use all the brushes that I have in my toolkit. <laughs> okay. um, because um, it just makes for cleaner colors, and I, I love using dry brushes. Um, it, especially if you're using, like doing a painting with lots of color. Change out your brushes. Don't, don't like get fussy and paint with that same brush the whole entire time. Um, you're going to be, um, you're going to be very sad because your colors are going to get mud, and there's good mud and there's bad mud, and if you're using the same brush for your whole painting, you're going to have, you have bad mud. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so I like I said, I blocked in all this acrylic pain, painting. This is a uh, 22 by 36 canvas. There, um, they're having a sale right now at Michael's. <laughs> buy one. <laughs> so buy one, get one free. So um, 
I, you know, if you're, a, if you're an artist on the budget like I am, there you go. Um, so I'm going to use, start off with my purple and my sap green, and I'm going to mix that, and I have some turpentine here. And I'm just going to kind of make a loosey-goosey. So you use turp instead of gamsol? Uh, I should say gamsol. Thank you for the correction. I'm just going to, um, I used to use turp, and I switched um, years ago when I started with the um, gambling products. And I might say turpentine by accident just because I, so many years of just saying that. So my apologies um, if you get, get confused. Um, so I'm playing around with the purple and the sap green now. And I'm just going to start blocking it in. I could change this at any moment, but I'm just going to kind of kind of block this in. The nice thing about having an underpainting is that the colors, you can leave the color, the underpainting kind of shining through a little bit. Um, so like if you want those warm tones to show, um, it just adds a really nice layer dimension to the painting. So I started painting when I was a teenager with oils. Um, um, my teacher, his name was Bob Glavlosky. He was the founder of the Haverhill Art Association. Um, amazing guy, such a nice, nice gentleman. And he taught me how to paint with his, his palette. He had um, colors that were unique to him. And gave me confidence. Um, to just to try to go for go go for things. Um, so I started with him when I was a teenager, and and then I went to Montserrat College of Art in Beverly, Mass. And that, that was fun. You know, I met a lot of awesome people. Um, Met my husband there, Peter Kalabokas. And the nice thing about art school is it really exposes you to all kinds of different people and, and techniques. So I had started off with the foundation of what my teacher, my, um, Bob, had given me. And, um, and then I started finding my own, my own voice and started finding colors that spoke to me that were a little different than his. Uh, I started using indigo and Naples yellow and, and different, you know, you learn different techniques learn a little art history. But honestly, you, can have, you, you don't need art school to paint. Um, anyone can paint. Most, most everything that I've learned, I've really taught myself when you think about it. It's just, it's just from, from making lots and lots of bad art. I tend to work the whole surface. Um, when I'm painting. So yeah, make lot I make lots and lots of bad art. I'll say like with you know, out of like twenty paintings I, I might make, I'll go one, I'll go, oh, I like that one. You know, that's that one's okay. Um, I'm always, when I'm done with a painting, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next one. So are you 
driving the camp canvases that you don't like? Um, you know, I just promoted Michael's, but I have to say you have to be really careful because some of those canvases um, buckle a little bit. So you have to like really look um, at what you're buying. Um, if your canvas does buckle, um, spray it on the back with some um, water and let that dry. It tends to tighten it up again. Um, Do you but, ever gesso the back of your canvas? So you, you know what? I used to until somebody had told me that once you gesso it, it might tight, tighten it for a short period, but then you're back to where you were before if it starts to buckle, and then where do you go from there? Okay. You know, you have to restretch it. So I used to do that, and, um, you know, with the temperatures, things um, expand and contract, wood, the canvas, and um, so usually just a little bit of water. Sometimes you have to restretch things. Um, will work. I have to get some more paint. There it is. Um, so I'm going to just keep blocking that in. Um, I let things drip. I like to play with the drips. Do you pr ever purposely put like gamzol on and just like rotate it? Yeah, the if I was and... like in my studio, yeah, um, I tend to paint. I have this huge um, table that I paint on, mm -hmm. and I'll tilt it. Um, my work table, and I, I do like working on the work table a little bit more than the easel. Okay. Um, I'll put it up on the easel so I can step back. I, like I really recommend stepping away from your paintings. Don't get like precious and too close. Um, now previously you were telling me that one of your paintings is going to Newberry for it? Yeah, so the, the big circle one uh, over there, that one's going to um, New report, they're having a show next month. Um, it's going to be all um, big paintings. So if you like to see big um, coastal type scenery, that's going to be an, a fun show to go to. Um, I think that's running the March, um, month of March. So I really, I, I, I I really love the New Report Art Association too. It, all these old art associations are so amazing to me for what they do for the community and, and um, how they give back. Like this one has their scholarship. Um, I, I got the New Report Art, Schol um, art Association scholarship when I was a teenager. And it helped pay for my books and um, you know these little these art associations are so, like they're the soul of the community they they help you know I mean art is so cathartic and it and it gives gives people something beautiful to do and see and Well, you brought up the scholarship, and I want to uh, mention that the Chelmsford Art Society is doing the scholarship again this year, and we nice. have decided we're doing two scholarships, $500 each. Wow. And the application and all the information is on our website, and it's open not only to Chelmsford, but all of the surrounding towns. So if you have a student in any of the surrounding towns, and it's just not all fine arts. It also includes fashion, includes photography, architecture, film, animation. Wow, that's fantastic. Yes, so we're hoping that we get a bunch of applications this year. Uh, the application dates are on the website and 
applications do have to be in by the end of April so that we can then go through and uh, have a panel look at all of the applications and look at the artwork. Uh, we are, I just talked to the town hall today, uh, to the town manager, and uh, we looks like we are 95% sure that we will have the art show nice. at in this building for the 4th of July. So we will do the scholarship award at that time. And anybody who's an artist, start working, because we will uh, accept a lot of paintings at that point, and, and photography, and craft, and all time three-dimensional art. That's fabulous. Also want to mention, March is, uh, talk about the Art Society, March is membership month, so uh, putting a plug in for renewing your membership. Or joining if you're not in a member already. <laughs> we all love new members. Yeah, yeah, these art associations, they really are the soul of the, the community. And they give back. I, I can, you know, I think back to when I was just a kid and, you know, going to, I, I was a member also of the Haverhill Art Association and going to their art demos. I mean, look, look what you get. You get art demos and education and art shows and... That's amazing, you know, all these opportunities that you get. I, I remember seeing some demos and just being so awestruck by the artists that they had and, 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 and wanting to be an artist someday. <laughs> like, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if I could do that too? Does anybody in the audience have any questions? I'm using a little titanium white right now. Okay. So I kind of put it down and I take it off and I put it down and I kind of take it off. Okay, I have another comment. I don't sl step in or fall into your work. I am swept into the land and sky. Oh, that's really wonderful. Oh. I, I feel so lucky that, like, to have people connect to the work is just, like, I do it for me. I put a little gamisol on my rag. Um, I do it for me. Um, and when, but when it speaks to somebody else, it's just, I'm always amazed. It's just like you find your people. Like your art, whatever you make, your art might not speak to everyone, but there's some, somebody your art is going to speak to. And if you can find somebody, um, that connects to your art, it's just such an amazing feeling. Is that? This is um, it's still the purple and the green. Okay. So I'm going back. Green I, I, and purple. I, yeah, I need to get dark. So I didn't always use this purple straight from the tube. Um, I used to mix all my own purples and greens, but back when uh, when Prince passed away, the musician, uh, I, like everybody knows Prince. Purple rain. Yeah, yes. purple rain. Uh, <laughs> I. I went out and I'm like, I, I have to buy purple for Prince. <laughs> and, 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 and then I just started creating all these purple paintings. I go through these, these color, color series and, and to kind of, I, I don't know, I work with the color until I get it out of my system. And, um, I, and I just started making these purple paintings and You know, it helped me think about things. 
I mean, when I think about Prince, I think back to when I was in high school and listening to his music. And I have an oh my god from somebody. <laughs> I hope that's a good oh my god. <laughs> I purposely do not read the per person's names. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, yeah, thank you for everybody being so supportive to me. I like, I know I say thank you a lot, but really, it's just it means a lot to me to have so many people who've been so. I have so many angels in my life. Um, I'm amazed that you do this part of it. When I was a kid, I like, in, you know, um, I want to say like my, my high school art teacher, he showed us videos of um, Jackson Pollock painting. And I was moved by how he, his whole body, it was a dance. And art, really, when you're painting, it should be like a full, a full body experience. It should be, you should be moving, you should be, it's like, a, it's a, some people go to the gym, I go to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe I should go to the gym a little more. But it should be a full, a full body experience. So that's what, a three-inch brush? Huh? That's a, I'm just looking at the size of the brush, three-inch? This, this one two is two-inch um, Walmart. I don't want to plug them, though. But um, just cheap um, painter's brushes. They work great, you know? Like, if you're going to do a big painting, you need a big brush. Um, and it's great for blending. Is everybody seeing the painting okay? I believe so. We now have 22 connected. Hi, people. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm picking up just a little bit of cadmium orange, and I think I'll just play around with that, see what happens. A little titanium white. I'm just letting my, my brush kind of dance. Um, so this is going to be a marsh, marsh kind of marshy kind of nightscape, I think. So you don't you don't need any like fancy mediums or I'm just using the gamma salt. Pushing paint around. Just taking my brush for a walk. I have comments. Yes, seeing is fine. It's very interesting when the camera view changes, how the light and color changes too. I have another comment about what artists do you find especially inspiring? Oh, so, you know, I, I love the masters like uh, Turner, which you probably expect. 
Um, but right now, it's funny that somebody just asked that, actually. I brought his book. Um, I'm really into this artist right now. He does um, a series of um, videos, and he wrote this book called Clear Pla Seeing Place. His name is Brian Rottenberg. I, so, like, if you're into art, if you're into process and painting and what it means to be a painter, this guy is amazing. Um, what he does with color, and, and he's so articulate, um, without being like... Now, can you say that artist's name one more um, time? Bri Brian Rottenberg, R-U-T-E-N-B-E-R-G. And you can follow his YouTube videos. He's on Facebook. Um, he's a New York artist, but um, he's inspired by um, where he grew up in the, in the South. So his, um, his paintings are very, they're abstract, but they're abstract landscapes. Um, and in the book, he talks about his, his journey as an artist. And I, I, I almost feel like this, I should, this should be almost like required reading for anyone going to art school, honestly, because it, it, he, he tells the truth about what it takes to, to be a painter and, um, and just, I, I just, I love his work. So that's what I've been following. Also, but I think my tonal influence right now has been um, the Wyeths. I went to Rockland, Maine over the mm -hmm. summer and, um, and I, I camped out and I won't tell you where I camped because I don't want anyone to go there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was so inspired by the Maine, just that area of the coast and his, his work. I watched, there's a, I highly recommend on Amazon right now, there's a, um, a documentary on the Wyeths um, on Amazon Prime, and it's so good. It's just like I just I just ate it up. I loved watching it, and so I've really he, and his work tends to be a little more tonal, and, except you know and Jamie and they're, they're you know they're a little bit more tonal. So I, I've just I've been into that right now. So I think that's why I'm doing so much liquid graf graphite too, because also. Um, watercolor and liquid graphite and inks and all that, they're so portable, like, um, you don't have to have a fancy studio, like, I, you know, like, you don't have to have a, a studio to, to make art and make marks. You can make art wherever you go, um, and, you know, the graphite and the watercolor and, and um, that, that's so portable, like, you can bring it anywhere, and, and I didn't want to like have all my oils and stuff out with me, and it's not great for the environment because I'm out in nature. And, but I could bring those things with me and just paint and and be inspired by what I was seeing. And and it just I don't know. It's just it's just a ma it's a magical place. And you know I, I hope to go to Mohegan Island at some point and and experience that. I have another comment about this is gorgeous. It's making me want to get my oils out again. Oh, thank you. Yeah, get some oils out. Get them out and, you know, like make a mess. And you're making art for yourself. Um, who cares if it's good or bad? You know, nobody has to see it. I don't, I, like, I, I have a social media presence, but if I showed you every painting I made, like, there's some dogs. <laughs> you know, like, not everything is great. Not everything is... You don't, if you keep waiting for the perfect moment, you'll be waiting forever. <laughs> there are no perfect moments. Um, you know, it's just, this is your time. This is your time to, you know, like, I'm a busy mom. I have, you know, my kids are older now, but, you know, this is your time to, for yourself. You know, sometimes you need to be a little selfish. It's not even being selfish, it's self-care. You know, art is the best therapy. I can atone to that. <laughs> this year with all the medical issues going on in my household, yes. Oh.
I, I had the honor of, a, a, I, so my last open studios, this, um, this beautiful woman came into my studio and it was such a cathartic, such a weird, surreal cathartic moment. She, she came into the studio and, and she was obviously, she'd been, she was a little ill and she told me she used my paintings. She puts them at her feet and she pretends she's in the painting as part of her therapy. And like, what do you say to that? Like, what do you say to that? It's just, I, I, I don't have words for that. I just kept saying thank you. I didn't know what to say. Um, it, that somebody used my work for that. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> Um, and you, so you never know, like when you make something or do something, you put it out there in the world, you have like, you might have an idea of what you think it is. You have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea of, of what impact you might have made on somebody or, so make some art, <laughs> you know, good or bad or <laughs> whatever. Um, you never know who you might, might meet and, and, and yeah. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I, I have like no words for that. It's just, it was magical. And I'm humbled that somebody would share that with me. I just, and, it makes you feel like, gosh, you know, like, am I worthy of that? Do I mean like, <laughs> such a, Yeah, open studios. You never know who's going to come in through your door. <laughs> Sorry, I, I might be a little quiet at times because I get into my own head when I'm painting. Sometimes I play music, sometimes I like it quiet. Sometimes my daughter's there doing her homework in the studio. We talk about the day. Same colors. I'm not changing. It's going to be a tonal thing. You can, you know, you can make a whole painting with just a few colors, honestly. burnt umber in there now. Mixed with my purple and my sap green. I tend to like to go dark and work my way in. Um, You're not just getting the back side of me. <laughs> no, it's 
started this painting, when you got the canvas, did you gesso it first? Um, and then do the acrylic, or was the acrylic your, prim your primary base? The acrylic was my primary base with this one. So I do tend to make my own surface, but not today. Sometimes I do. Like I said, I'm always changing. It's like, <laughs> I could totally do it a different way tomorrow. <laughs> it's getting dark and moody, huh? Yeah. Just to let you know, we're at 8.50. Oh, okay. I mean, at, I, you know, if. 7, 7.51. So I'm obviously probably not going to finish a painting, but you're getting a good idea of my process. Definitely. Um, We will film you however long you want to go. Huh? <laughs> we'll film you forever long you want to go. <laughs> um, plus, so so I, I think I plugged earlier, but I'll say it again. Um, we have open studios at Western Avenue the first Saturday of every month. Uh, highly recommend it if you want to feel inspired and immerse yourself in um, art. There's like every kind of art you can imagine from painters, sculptors, glass artists. Um, it's five floors of art in this old mill, historic mill building in, um, off School Street in downtown Lowell. Um, brewery, there's a uh, coffee shop in there. Um, and it, there's so much art, you literally cannot get through it in a day. It, the building is just that big, so you'll have to come back again. But I highly recommend going to an open studio because they're just really amazing. Like even if you're not coming to, you know, say hi, which I would hope you would say hi to me, um, just go see some artists and support them. And you know, there's no admission. And encourage somebody because there's people who are just like starting out. And there are people who have been doing it forever. And I don't care if you've been doing it forever or not. Everybody likes encouragement. You know, spread that positivity, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, maybe I'll have this painting done for you. You can come see how it came out. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you. So how many hours a week do you dedicate to working in your studio? Uh, it, it, it varies again. Um, so I, I have a daughter. She's a senior in high school. So I kind of, uh, right now, you know, I, I revolve around her. Um, but I try to get into the studio three or four days a week at least. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it takes me about an hour to set up. Then, you know, I like to paint for a couple hours at least. And then I have to clean all my brushes. So I like to get, like, carve out at least four to five hours at, in a session. Um, and I tend my process to have many paintings going. So I'll have one in this stage. I'll have one in another stage. Another, all kind of going simultane simultaneously. And... Um, and just kind of bounce around my studio. Like, you know, right now I have two commissions that I'm working on. Um, one is a, like a cop mix, copper mixed media piece, and another one is like a traditional seascape um, that somebody wanted. So, you know, so I, I have those that I'm working on right now, and then I have pieces that I just do for me. Um, like let, yesterday, I felt like red. So I did a painting with red uh, geraniums um, just because I just felt like I wanted to paint something red. Um, so I always have several paintings going and, um, and, and I, you know, I try to get in like, I don't know, at least, I w ideally I would like to get in at least 20 hours a week, but that doesn't always happen depending, depending on, you know, family, like any of us. <laughs> yeah, life gets happening. Yes. Yeah, things happen. You know, I, my daughter's a senior. I have a, um, my son's also, um, 
He's a senior in, at Fitchburg State, and he's studying film and media. And, uh, and so, you know, my kids, my family, my family comes first. So. Any questions from the audience before we cut down shortly? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. We will have a presentation next month, and we were having Gwen Lamour. Uh, she has a studio at Brush, and she's going to be doing, she does a lot of drawing and Ooh. charcoal and paintings of female bodies and some really interesting uh, style that she uses. Ooh. So she will be our Mar March presentation. That sounds nice. It's some interesting work. I just am, I think the Art Society is so privileged for all of the artists who we've been able to have come and do presentations for us because we've had fantastic artists. Everybody has been fantastic. Oh yeah, I, I you know I, I watched a few few videos before this and um, I was just I'm just amazed at the the talent that you you're able to encourage to come up here from people from who have like very traditional to people who are very like, um, you know, like self-taught artists, you know, mm -hmm. um, all different kinds of artists. It's just, what a wonderful experience that you're giving your reviewers. And just remember everybody who's an artist, the art show in July. <laughs> in July. <laughs> uh, I have comments. Thank you, Bethany, for stepping out of your comfort zone and painting for us. Oh. Magnificent work. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. But that's interesting how you just added the cloud definition in there. Yeah. So I just I would just keep doing that. Is that titanium white? Yep, that's titanium white. Yeah, like my pro like I said before, my process is like I'll put things down and I'll destroy them again. I'll wipe it all out and I go back and forth. Um, and, and then if like if I find little jewels that I like, like ooh, then I'll leave it. Or if sometimes if I feel like something is too, I'll go oh that's too precious. I'm being too precious and I'll totally um, wipe out a painting um, if I feel like I'm getting too precious with it um, or too nitpicky which, you know, you don't want to room it, you don't want to keep going over the same spots over and over again. Um, so, but, yeah. I really like trying, you know, like when I use the big brushes, I, like I think in my head I'm, I'm thinking atmosphere and I, I, I love how it just blends and creates that kind of that um, you can almost like feel the air. I love those moments. Um, so. Okay, we are at 7.59. Okay, well, I think, you know, you've got an idea of my process and um, I hope you know, if anybody has more questions, feel free to message me. Um, I'm on Facebook, Instagram. Um, I have a website um, that you can send messages to, but um, most of my current work is on Instagram. Um, so if you're really interested in following me, um, that's a great resource. Um, my art can be found at uh, Western Avenue, the Logan Dock Gallery. Um, Gallery Z. I'm at Stam and Black in uh, West Acton. Uh, Village Studio in North Andover. Um, I'm in New Report Art Association right now. Um, so art tends to be all over. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Well, and thank, thank you so you much for much. having it's me. So and enjoyable. <laughs> and thank you for doing this. 
Oh, of course, of course. It was my pleasure. I hope people had fun. Um, and it was, you know, something I've, I've never done before. So, so thank you for having me. And, um, and uh, thank you again. <laughs> thank you.